Hello, my name is Daniel Robinson. I'm a neonatologist at Lurie Children's Hospital in Chicago and a faculty member at the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. On behalf of the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, I want to speak with you today about the use of photoprotection for parenteral nutrition in premature infants. The purpose of this two-part video series is to provide background, recommendations, and implementation steps for photoprotection. Part one, this video, will provide the background and recommendations, and part two will provide a clinician knowledge gap analysis and suggested implementation steps for photoprotection. In this slide, you can see the newly published Aspen Position Paper on recommendations for photoprotection of PN in premature infants. I'll point out a few disclaimers. Aspen and the authors understand that the full implementation of complete photoprotection may not currently be feasible given current product availability. Recommendations provided in this paper serve to represent the goal to which to strive as well as to highlight the importance of product availability to achieve these practices. Aspen does not endorse any brand of products shown herein or mentioned in this presentation. As background on the need for photoprotection, many hospitalized premature infants require parenteral nutrition, or PN. A growing body of evidence suggests that components of PN admixtures, including lipid injectable emulsions, or ILEs, are susceptible to degradation, including oxidation, when exposed to light, in other words, photooxidation. This light exposure results in the production of reactive oxygen species, including hydrogen peroxide and organic peroxides. Infants, especially those born preterm, are considered more susceptible to consequences of oxidative stress than children and adults. There are many contributors to oxidative stress, including oxygen therapy, peroxide load from PN administration, blood transfusions, and medications. Oxidative stress is associated with bronchopulmonary dysplasia, or a chronic lung disease of prematurity, retinopathy of prematurity, necrotizing enterocolitis, intestinal failure-associated liver disease, as well as infections. Now, before we take a look at the literature, I want to provide some basic definitions on photoprotection. When I mention complete photoprotection, I'm referring to implementing light protective measures for PN admixtures and ILEs during the multiple steps of the PN process, including sterile compounding in the pharmacy, transport and delivery to the patient care area, as well as administration to the patient. When I mention partial photoprotection, this means that light protection occurs at one or more of the steps in the PN process, yet not during 100% of the process. In 2017, Dr. Philippe Chessex published a meta-analysis on survival in premature infants based on whether their PN was photoprotected. The analysis included four studies of 800 premature infants. These studies looked at the use of complete photoprotection from compounding through administration, and they found reductions in mortality in the light-protected group. Study limitations should be noted. Limitations included that none of the four individual studies were blinded. A significant reduction in mortality was not identified in the individual studies. However, there was a trend toward decreased mortality when PN admixtures were protected from light. Although there is homogeneity based upon the I-squared statistic, it should be noted that a single study significantly influenced the weighting of results as it contributed 587 infants to the total of 800. In that largest study, a multicenter randomized control trial of PN photoprotection implemented the complete shielding using amber bags, light protective tubing, 
and amber syringes initiated during the PN compounding process and maintained throughout the infusion in the light-protected group. Malondialdehyde as a biomarker of lipid peroxidation was lower if the 3-in-1 PN was light-protected versus light-exposed. There was no effect of light protection on BPD or bronchopulmonary dysplasia or mortality. More recently, European authorities, specifically the Pharmacovigilance Risk Assessment Committee of the European Medicines Agency, evaluated the reporting of adverse outcomes in infants treated with PN admixtures not protected from light. Light exposure of admixtures containing amino acids and ILEs after being mixed with vitamins and or trace elements is associated with toxic degradation and potentially severe clinical outcomes in premature infants. It was recommended that European authorities provide additional information to healthcare providers and identify actions to mitigate adverse outcomes. Aspen was also contacted by the FDA in 2020 to inquire about our expert opinion on this topic. In light of the published data and those events, there seemed to be growing support for the photoprotection of PN in this vulnerable, premature population at all steps of PN preparation, from compounding through dispensing and during administration. The American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, or ASPEN, assembled a PN Safety Committee Working Group to provide recommendations on clinical practice surrounding photoprotection of PN, including PN compounding, transfer of PN to clinical care units from pharmacy sterile compounding areas and facilities, as well as details of patient administration. This position paper reviewed the scientific literature on the formation of quantifiable peroxides and other degradation products when PN admixtures and ILEs are exposed to light, and reported adverse clinical outcomes in premature infants exposed to PN. Recommendations for photoprotection of PN admixtures and ILEs are provided, as well as the challenges in achieving complete photoprotection with the equipment, supplies, and materials currently available in the United States. And here are the eight summary statements and recommendations the work group came up with. Number one, in vitro testing indicates PN and ILE integrity, including pre-compounding individual components as well as the final admixture, is optimized with light protection. Light exposure at any step in the storage, compounding, delivery, and infusion can alter the admixture stability. Number two, in vitro data indicate that partial photoprotection of PN products reduces markers of oxidative stress, although it is not as effective as complete photoprotection. Number three, data from clinical trials evaluated individually and collectively in a meta-analysis suggest complete photoprotection of PN admixtures and ILEs reduces indicators of oxidative stress in preterm infants and mitigates the risk of adverse clinical outcomes. It remains noteworthy that statistically significant findings of benefit from light protection were sometimes found only with secondary analysis. No harm was identified as a result of photoprotection. Number four, materials required for complete photoprotection from the moment PN compounding is initiated in the pharmacy are not currently available in the United States, yet materials are currently available for partial photoprotection. Number five, Aspen recommends photoprotection of PN admixtures and ILEs for infants. Insufficient literature exists to inform recommendations surrounding photoprotection of PN admixtures and ILE administered to older children or adults. 
Number six, individual healthcare organizations should convene key stakeholders to define which steps in photo protection can be achieved and implement such strategies. Number seven, outsourcing sterile compounding facilities should review processes which may be amenable to reducing light exposure, both during the compounding process as well as during the transport process. Number eight, research and development of cost-efficient materials are necessary for complete photo protection of PN admixtures and ILEs. Here are the references for this presentation. Look for part two of this video series on photo protection, looking at current practice and implementation. Thank you for your attention. This video was provided to you by Aspen, supported by an educational grant from Fresenius Cabe, USA, LLC.